today I'm going to talk about uh, a feature called pinning in Swarm. Uh, this is a very recent feature. There is a blog which we released two days before. I highly recommend that you go through the blog uh, to understand more about this feature and uh, more upcoming features uh, in our blog. So let's go through some history behind uh, uh, what is Swarm and why we need this feature and how useful this feature is. If you look at the very traditional distributed systems, uh, they are designed uh, using uh, what is called as uh, client server or master agent architecture. So there will be one or more masters um, and multiple agents. Um, master decide what agents uh, needs to do and uh, agents um, execute the things um, blindly what the master says. Um, this has a lot of issues uh, which I'm not going to discuss. Uh, the main, uh, the main, the main class of systems that we are going to discuss today is peer-to-peer -peer systems. Peer-to-peer -peer systems don't have any centralized entities. Uh, here, if you look at this, uh, I mean, every box represents a node, a computer. Uh, which has a certain qualities uh, like a certain disk, certain CPU, certain network I.O. Um, so these are self-organizing networks. That means you can bring down the node anytime up. It will try to find out uh, its neighboring nodes and it will connect to only a few nodes, not, the, uh, not with all the nodes because it will exhaust the connections and you know all these things that with scalability issues so it will just connect to few nodes which are closest to it depending upon certain you know, parameters um, to to just help these nodes get uh, um, a boot start there are few nodes that will be designated as bootstrap nodes which are marked this gray in color here uh, these two nodes um, uh, so if any new nodes comes up they by default will contact this node get the neighbors of this node and will try to see whether that node is, is closest to it otherwise get the neighbors of the that node and so on until it, until the until it reaches to a point where it has found uh, a group of neighbors which are closest to it and that is what that will that that that's that's the neighbors uh, that this this particular node will use to communicate to and from the network right swarm uses um, something like this um, it uses uh, it uses an academia based um, uh, system uh, to get connected to the network and once it is connected um, you know you can basically do all the functions of the network in Swarm. Swarm is basically a distributed uh, data storage system so every node uh, will have to give some piece uh, some portion of its uh, disk uh, to the network so that the network can send uh, information to store there and retrieve whenever it's actually needed. Here is an example of uh, a file being uploaded uh, from uh, Swarm node. Uh, if we consider this red color uh, block as a full file, when you upload it to a Swarm node, what Swarm node does is that it splits the file into smaller pieces called chunks uh, which are 4k in size and sends those chunks to um, um, the, it scatters these chunks to nodes around the network uh, closest to its address right so these nodes will get these chunks and store these chunks um, in their 
in the disk right so now uh, let's look at one such node where uh, it has stored a chunk this node will keep on receiving chunks from the network to store and uh, at one point um, so this this uh, this this structure here is uh, uh, least recently accessed structure so as we get more chunks or chunks get access these gets pushed up or down and if our chunk is not getting accessed and more chunks come from the system our chunk will get pushed down until at one point the chunk vanishes the chunk will be garbage collected because you you just uh, you just you know, promise uh, to swarm that uh, i will uh, i'll expand only this much disk space and if, if if it goes beyond that swarms garbage collection kicks in and it just picks up garbage collects that node that particular chunk now because of this what happens so when you try to access the file this particular swarm nodes try to contact these nodes to give back the chunks and one of the nodes or one or few of the nodes will not have the chunk so you won't get back the file right this is the missing chunk scenario right um there are two long term uh, there are two actually solutions to this uh one is a long term solution and another is a short term solution long term solution is to add incentivization to swarm is is to is to uh, you know when somebody uploads a file uh, if he agrees to pay for the file then the node that keeps the chunk has an incentive to not garbage collect that particular chunk so that it can receive incentives from the you know from the uploader right so that chunk remains there in the swarm network uh, there is a uh, there is a whole bunch of protocol called swap swear and swindle in swarm that is defined there is papers written and um, yeah but the issue is the implementation is very complex and it is ongoing until then uh, what will actually happen is that anybody who wants to upload a file in swarm or uh, you know a dap website in swarm um, when he actually comes after some time the dap will be garbage collected so he has an issue that he cannot use swarm right now to do his dap development and uh, you know to test his dap in swarm for this we introduced a feature called pinning pinning is of two types uh, local and global i will talk about them <laughs> so this is the sort of expanded view of what will happen uh, um, when you say you know when you upload a chunk you can say hey uh, I mean when you upload a file I'm sorry when you upload a file you can say hey pin this file also <laughs> so what actually happens is um, inside the swarm node the you know the chunker which actually splits the file stream into small chunks and keep the chunks in the chunk index and send that to the network store also keeps that in something called as the pin index um, as so that a local copy of the file is always available right so when somebody comes and asks for this file um, I'm sorry when somebody comes and asks for this file um, uh, even though um, few chunks are missing in the swarm network uh, the entire chunk is already visible uh, is already available uh, in the uploaded in the pinned swarm node so a client can come to the pinned swarm node and can ask for the file and it he will he will get the local copy of the file but it has a, it has a disadvantage if you go to another swarm node and ask for the same file uh, it doesn't have a clue that this is actually pinned so this will go and look into the swarm network 
and it will find that a uh, few chunks are missing and it will say file not found right so this is the first step in you know in actually pinning this is implemented using this this is still useful because you um, i mean if if you are a dap developer uh, you can host your own swarm gateway and host your swarm dap here uh, and still connect to the network and can uh, build your dap out of swarm and you know test it and uh, run it uh, like it is like a uh, like it is la uh, as 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 if incentives are enabled right um, until um, okay so we still have this problem where uh, you cannot access this from any other swarm node um, users have to go to that particular swarm node where this dap is pinned and that is still a problem and for that there is uh, another feature which is an extension of local pinning is called global pinning uh, which is coming in near future what will happen is that if you access the file from another swarm node it will try to look into the network if the network is not giving enough chunks it will find the pinner that has pinned the node and get back the chunks from the pinner and serve to them as if it has got it from the swarm network right so with these two solutions um, swarm will be um, will be ready to deploy uh, dApps and work and for access from anywhere um, um, uh, until incentivization is ready even after incentivization is ready pinning is extremely useful uh, because pinning provides uh, um, pinning um, exposes a um, lot of use cases uh, like uh, storage insurance and, and all these things so um, this is all about uh, the pinning feature um, if you want to know more about pinning I would suggest uh, you to look at uh, the pinning epic in the pinning uh, in the swarm github um, which has uh, more information and um, yeah enjoy uh, have a look at the swarm documentation for um to to see how to use pinning there are examples on how to pin and unpin and list uh, files which are already pinned and things like that uh, i would uh, strongly recommend people who are interested in swarm to go and try this feature video i want to show you a little example of how to use pinning uh, if you see you when you start a swarm you have to use enable pinning flag uh, and on the other terminal I just want to show two files small file and one big file uh, let's upload the big file and when uploading you have to have this uh, x swarm pin is equal to true header uh, which means that I want to I want to actually pin the file so the file is uploaded now once the file is uploaded uh, you want to actually look at uh, look whether the file is pinned and this is the command to see if the file is pinned uh, the the hash we got and the hash we got here is the same the pin counter is one now and let's say we want to pin the same file again with somebody else now if you do the same if you actually do the pin list command uh, the pin count is two now. That means two people are interested in this file, right? So now let's um, let's uh, let's pin the small file, um, and uh, using the same x one pin header equal to true, <laughs> and um, let's see if that file is pinned. Yes, that file is pinned, and the pin count of that file is one and um, yeah you can see the other file we, we pinned also 
now let's try to actually delete the file the old, uh, yeah, one of the old files which is pinned twice uh, so once we delete it and we have do a list command and now the pin counter has been reduced to one uh, since uh, one of the interested party has unpinned it um, if you unpin again that will go off so only the small file now remains as pinned so it's like a GC counter so uh, the number of uh, number of people interested in it the pin counter will keep on increasing if all of them are uninterested it will unpin the file this is a small demo of the pinning feature.